coming from the mountain to one and all. There's a call, a call to every tribe and nation. Worship Him, the Lamb who sits upon the throne. unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. I see the Lord
Good morning. We are excited to share a little bit with you about our tour this past week. Um, Dr. Anderson always admonishes us that we are not giving up our spring break. We're, we're getting something else, and it truly is that. And we gained a lot by ministering in this church. As we travel nearly 1,500 miles, we were in five Christ well, four Christian schools, we did five concerts there, though, and nine concerts at churches in the evenings. And actually, two of them were canceled because of the snowstorm. But we thank the Lord for safety. That's a lot of miles to travel. My mom texted me when we left and said she was praying for us. And I said, thank you. It feels like I have 27 kids in tow. And it feels like a big responsibility. But it was truly a blessing to minister and to, to be in a lot of Christian schools, meet a lot of young people. It's exciting to see young people that are wanting to live for the Lord. We ask them questions about our concerts. Um, our theme is about worship. And I ask the kids what worship is. And I got such great answers, a lot of answers that I give in my class this semester, the freshman class. But it's so exciting to see people that want to hear about God's word and are excited about serving him and want to worship him with their lives. I want to say thanks to a few people. Ms. Akers did a great job with our itinerary, did a lot of work communicating with churches, and we appreciate that so much. I want to thank Mr. Holloway, who couldn't be here today, but he traveled with us, drove the bus, and was just our right-hand man, did a lot of things for us. He did some team-building activities with us, which were great, just to <laughs> help us bond as a team and have fun and to relax a little bit. So I appreciate that so much. I want to thank all these students, too. They literally give 100%, and I appreciate all the work that they have put in. Um, they have a lot to do this semester. We have a recital to do. We have Spring Festival on top of this. So three different programs they're memorizing. So they put in a lot of effort, and I really appreciate that. I wanted to, to note four of these students, too. Four of them um, have been with me for the last four years. So I came four years ago. They've been in my corral every year. So Matthew Allinger, Alan Church, Caleb Ellison, and Michaela Patrick, they've been so loyal, and I appreciate that. That helps my task a lot if I have people that are returning members and they're leaders on our team and just a, a good example to everyone, and I appreciate their loyalty so much. We want to share a little bit with you from our program. Our program is about worshiping the Lord. Um, the first section is about Christ who is high and lifted up. It's a phrase used about worship. You know, God is, is lofty. He's lifted up above us, therefore we worship him. The same phrase, though, is used in reference to the crucifixion. Jesus was lifted up to die. And without the sacrifice of the cross, worship wouldn't be possible. So back in Genesis, you know, the fellowship was broken and a sacrifice had to be made. And all of those sacrifices were pointing forward to the once-for-all sacrifice of Christ, which was going to make it possible for man to, to be reunited with God and to be able to worship him acceptably once again. So these next two songs are about the cross and really the centerpiece of what worship is. Tears can never repay the debt of 
ascended, my Savior, seed and dim, my sovereign Lord. He did both that sacred hedge for sinners such as I. For Christ was it for time he groaned upon the torment of tree, for Christ was it for time he groaned upon the torment tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree, and love beyond degree, beyond degree. And they took Jesus and led him away, and he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is in the Hebrew Golgotha, and there they crucified him, and two other with him. On either side, one, and Jesus in the midst.
So one thing we do on Corral Tour to keep us all organized is everybody has jobs. And one of my jobs on this tour was helping with literature. So I got to set up the table, put literature on the table, stand by the table, and see people had questions. And I also got to give promos in the Christian schools that we were in. And when I first found out that I was going to have to do that, I was really nervous because I was like, man, I have to stand up here in front of a bunch of high schoolers that are going to be judging me. And... I have to like give an ABC promo, and despite living at ABC my whole life, I've never actually done that before. So it was pretty nerve-wracking. The first time I was doing it, my hands were shaking. I was talking way too fast. It wasn't my finest public speaking moment. But over the course of the week, I got a little more confident in doing it, and I'm really thankful that I had the opportunity to be in these Christian schools and to speak to these kids because it encouraged me about why I'm here at ABC, and it was a cool chance to minister to the kids. We got to be with some elementary kids. I met a preschooler named Claire, and she said that we are best friends now, and it was just so precious to be with her and to hear their joy and their different definitions of worship, like Mr. Yowell said. It was also cool to be with the high schoolers because we have this concentrated group of people that are being forced to listen to us, and they have to decide soon, you know, am I going to college? What am I going to do with my life? And it was awesome to get to challenge them to serve God with their life. And sometimes God would just even lead me to the right people that I could specifically interact with who were interested in teaching in the future. And I could share about how learning how to teach at ABC is preparing me for the future. I'm really glad that we got to minister in these Christian schools and that I got the opportunity to speak to the group and one-on-one -on -one with different students because it was just a great way to reinforce why I'm here and to challenge other people to also serve God with their lives. Immortal, invisible, our God only wise, enlightened, accessible, that's been from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Immortal, invisible, Oh, yeah. 
Corral tour, um, God taught me so much just about his sufficiency and his strength that he gives us. And being able to go on Corral tour is a huge blessing and privilege because just days before, I gotten more news about my eye condition. And there's so many unknowns, more questions than there were answers. But I just saw God's faithfulness and his care in ways I haven't before. And it was an incredible testimony, going to new places, new environments, and not real always having my bearings. But so many people, both those on Corral and those in the churches and even those in the schools, have just done anything they could to help me get around. And also people have gone up to me and just said that despite limitations, just serving God, despite that, encouraged them through difficult things they were going through. And it reminded me of the purpose why I am going into ministry, into counseling, that the comfort that God gives us, that with his comfort, we can comfort others. And just as the blind man in John 9, 3, Jesus referring to him said that it wasn't because of his parents or he that sinned, but that, the, that God's glory would be made manifest in him. So even if I don't know what the future looks like, and even though I feel like in my flesh I'm losing part of who I am when my vision is fading and don't know what the future looks like, I can trust in the Lord and have comfort in his presence because he's all I need and I am sufficient in him.
would think after four years of doing this, I wouldn't be nervous talking in front of groups of people anymore, but here I am shaking. Um, but four years ago, my parents dropped me off here at ABC with a singular instruction. They said, Matthew, you have to make it on corral. <laughs> we're not taking you back for spring, um, spring, uh, spring break because we're not flying you out to Utah. As most of you know, my home state is Utah. We're not flying you out to Utah, so you have to make it on corral so that you can have a place to be for spring break. And that is the sole reason that I tried out for corral freshman year. <laughs> And I can say that after four years of having done this every single year, I have not regretted a single moment of time that I have put into Corral. Corral has been some of the best moments of my time here at ABC, have been on Corral tour and singing with the Corral. God has really blessed me with the ability to enjoy music. I know he has blessed all of you with the ability to enjoy music as well. And so something that he has really blessed me with was being able to sing on Corral for four entire years with my peers who can also, I hope, sing. Um, <laughs> It has truly been a blessing and an experience. Um, over those four years on Corral Tour, I've had many different jobs, um, unloading, sound equipment, whatever is needed by Mr. Yowl in the moment. Um, and he has really grown me through those experiences. He has taught me so many lessons that I would have never been able to learn otherwise. Diligence, patience, perseverance, um, even knowing how to wake up at a consistent time in the mornings. Simple things like that are things that I would not have been able to learn if it wasn't for Corral Tour, I w or at least I wouldn't have been able to learn as well. So if, if you are considering joining Corral, or you think that you are even remotely as good of a singer, believe me, you couldn't have been as bad as I was when we first came in. And there is always a place for you here on Corral to learn and grow in God's word. We rely on God's strength here. We are all weak. I think we can all safely determine that after Corral Tour. We all know very thoroughly that we are weak, um, but we know that God is strong in our weakness, and that is never more evident than here on Corral. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground for the Lord is here and where he is is holy this is holy ground we're standing on holy ground for the Lord is here 
that a lot of things do not go according to our plans. Um, so about nine months before I came to ABC, I only really had about two main plans for my life. I knew who I wanted to marry, and I knew that we were going to be involved in missions in some capacity. Um, and then it was New Year's Eve. We were less than a mile from my house um, when we slid down a hill um, and ended up hitting a guardrail and flipping onto our side. And um, my niece and I were hospitalized for a time, and my boyfriend Noah actually went home to be with the Lord. Um, Obviously, this was a very difficult time in my life. Um, I'm the type of person that I will just continue moving on. I will try to pretend like everything is fine and just push forward. I ended up getting a job like three months later, um, despite physical issues. And during that summer, I really strayed from the Lord. My relationship with him became one of duty, not desire. Um, I did not want to come to ABC by any means, but I knew the Lord wanted me there, and I couldn't just sit around at home. So I ended up coming to ABC. I really struggled. I didn't want to be here at all. I didn't really want to serve the Lord. Um, my future just seemed like I had no hope anymore. And there was a line in the um, song that Hillary sang, when all I possess is grief, God be then my treasure. At that time, all I could see was grief. All I could see was what I lost. And it was really hard um, to push on. And even this weekend, actually, Noah would have been 22. So this week is kind of a hard week for me. But. <clears throat> Um, one verse that really stuck out to me, which is a really cliche verse that I know we hear all the time, is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Um, I did not handle the situation perfectly, and I wish I could stand up here and say I understand everything now, and it all makes sense why that had to happen. Um, but sometimes in life, we don't know why things happen, and that's okay, and that's where the trust comes in. It's not fun, and we don't like going through hard situations. But that's when God's grace becomes more clear to you than it ever has been before.
Yeah.